Welcome back to another episode of Prep Radio. Tom Blackman with Paul Scarborough in attendance. Hello, Paul. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. And how is your quarantine cell, which you're living in? <laughs> well, um, it's all right, actually. It's, um, I have had all the emails and the, um, and the mail, the hot normal mail and texts and stuff about um, shielding, just obviously because of my transplant, I'm part of the ex- uh, people at extreme risk. Um, so, it, so I'm not going out and I'm being very careful as everybody should, but I don't know if many people know, but the extreme risk people actually get a notification, be that via text or by a letter or email, or whatever, um, on the rules for them. So currently the rules for average person like you is obviously to stay in, only go out for essential needs, uh, exercise, that sort of thing. Um, for me, the actual um, instruction that comes through is that I have to stay in. I can't go out. If I want fresh air, I should open a window. Genuinely, that's what he says. He actually says that. Um, I can open a window. I'm supposed to keep um, three spaces away from um, anyone and have no contact with children which is quite hard in a household where you've got three kids. Um, I should sleep in a different bed. Um, My wife wasn't too um, bothered about that. She was like, yeah, we should try that. Um, um, Become a regular thing afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Just in case, Paul, sleep somewhere else. (laughs) (laughs) I should should use a uh, separate bathroom. Um, I should use separate cutlery and plates and, and, and it really gets like, wow, okay. And then reality sets in and you're like, right, my house isn't small. You know, it's a four bedroom, semi detached, it's, you know, and I've got my own office and stuff, but there's no way on earth I'm going to be able to explain to my three-year-old, he's not allowed to cuddle me or we're not allowed to play or, you know, so. so basically Hannibal Lecter then. Yeah, it, it is, you know, I, I just don't know how anybody would be able to do it. I know my next door neighbour um, has got terminal cancer, bless, and um, she's just finished chemotherapy. So she isolated in her own house, in her bedroom for two weeks. Wow. And was like, no, I've, I've, I've had enough. I can't, I can't keep doing this for 12 weeks. And I think on a more serious note, I think, I think that's the that's going to be the big problem. You know, I think, um, you know, I've, I've got the three boys here um, and my wife. Unfortunately, I'm, I haven't seen my daughter for four or five weeks and I don't know when I'll next see her. Um, so that, probably. <laughs> yeah, the fair one. Yeah, so she, she'll suddenly find a way of getting here if she needs money. <laughs> she'll come up but, in a hazmat yeah. suit. Can I have 20 yeah. quid? <laughs> yeah. So, but, and, and that's hard, obviously, but um, Kiana's got FaceTime and stuff. She's 21 now, so um, that's all cool. But, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that haven't got that. So they are, you know, really alone and things. And um, I, I, I really think that that's going to be a problem um, moving forward. Um, you know, there's been lots of things on social media about, posting a picture and especially for the male suicide rate and things. Cause obviously I think it, it was, is a massive emphasis over the last couple of years and, and they were sort of getting on to not getting on top of it, but reducing it to some degree um, by men coming out and talking about their issues and things like that. And, um, and I, I really think one of the potential like, negatives from all of this which obviously is certainly not positive but one of the little things that's going to come out of it that maybe is not getting as much press at the moment is the problem with isolation with people who don't have families and and stuff like that but um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah i'm fine um obviously um (laughs) i'll be honest it it's those who know me who listen to the podcast or know of my story know that um, these last three years have been hell and um, and I've been um, close to death um, three times now 
Um, I think this is like Final Destination, and it's like, do you know what? We fucking try to give him sepsis, <laughs> try to heart attack, try to like, you know, get him out of the navy by crushing him with something. And he's fucking bastard. Just will not die. They yeah. just have a global we, pandemic. That'll sort you. Yeah. We even tried doing him on the um, operating table last year. But <laughs> yeah. He will not die. Yeah, yeah, Terminator. So, right. We're gonna get you now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and 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 I'll be honest, mate. Um, I'm I'm scared, scared of crap of getting it, mm. you know. Um, and it is, it does, it does wind me up when idiots make dismiss it and make make it sound like oh it's this and whatever. So I've made a ruling actually to myself that if there's anybody doing any of that sort of crap then I just just ban them from my social media. I, I just don't have I just don't have that enough time in my my own space to to be sharing my story, my social media or whatever with idiots like that. How how are you doing? Because I know obviously you've you've got Jacob and mm. you know you're co-parenting and stuff. So Oh yeah, so um, yeah, so people didn't know. Um, me and Nick split up about um, back in February. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah. So um, yeah, we 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 split up in February. Um, it literally is about, I think, three weeks before this started. So I moved house probably about two weeks before this started, and um, and and so thankfully I've been able to still see Jacob because you're still allowed to travel between um uh between parents so so do you know what actually all this stuff is actually i've been able to see i'm not saying it's good but i've been able to see jacob more because the gym's obviously shut because we're not allowed to to open um I, i've been working from home obviously every day um and um and i've been seeing jacob sort of i think three to four times a week for pretty much the whole day which is which is really good um we've been exercising in the garden so i've got a fairly decent sized garden so um and i've got these um like soft play things so if you see my instagram you'll see me chucking all these yeah. soft play blocks yeah, and uh, yeah he loves it and we've got a look at football and everything else so we don't go for walks we don't go for like our hour exercise outside the, the house or whatever because i'm i'm very careful that i don't want to you know expose him to anything that i don't need to if i go shopping i go by myself um as much as i can to, to asda or whatever and i go at quiet times um, uh, because um, uh, some of Nick's family are, um, are in the high risk, not as high as you, but they are in the high risk. So I don't want obviously that to be transmitted back. So I'm really careful about what I'm doing. Um, and, and Jacob quite loves it, you know, he, he sees me all the time now, and, and which is nice. So it'd be weird when, you know, all this stops and I've got to go back to doing uh, sort of full time work. Um, but yeah, and, and it's quite nice weather stuff. So, um, and I'm still able to do my webinars and still able to do my Facebook lives and, still able to work with my nutrition clients from from home i just do like facebook lives or um or like facetime or whatever to talk to them so it's not really a and, and um <clears throat> speaking of that uh, you've done a couple sort of business ones lately haven't you oh yeah so so it's something i always wanted to do was to do these um do like webinars which because I'm, I'm sort of quite good when i get in front of a crowd and, and i, I present I presented at body power uh, last year twice which was really you know a, a really daunting experience but i loved it and i presented it um for the ofb and a few other places on private presentations so i'm actually i quite like sort of public speaking and i've done um so, I, so i've been doing webinars every every week so every tuesday at 6 p.m i do this do this webinar it's on a different topic each week but it's all at the moment related to the covid stuff so i did uh, about a week and a bit ago i did um eight things to maximize your home workouts which wasn't it wasn't all burpees and like lifting the couch or whatever it was stuff to maximize how you do muscle contractions how you think about your workouts um that's on replay if people want to go and watch it it's on my website it's on my facebook business page it's on youtube vimeo um so you can rewatch it if you want and this week i did uh 21 things to 21 top tips to stay in shape during the lockdown and it was it's not just staying in shape physically it's mentally as well and put productivity wise because a lot of people have their environments where they're at work and they have their yeah. environments at home with their family and then they have their social environment 
and that's one of my sort of arms of the diet ecosystem which is my trademark thing that i work with clients so they have these three environments that they're, they're in so they can distinguish where they need to be and and now they're not because all those environments have now come into the home so a lot of people are like well i'm trying to work but i've got my kids running around and when will I, when do i exercise and when do i talk to my mates so so the 21 top tips is about how to separate that out and how to be more productive but also how to calculate your calories and stuff like that so i did yeah one to seven this week and then the next two weeks of the next seven um so and they're they're free to watch it's free content if people want to get on board there's a q a at the end which is um anybody can ask a question and if if it's um if you want you can come on and have a like a live uh, video conference or whatever so yeah so it's, it's there if people want to use it and it's obviously going to be on free replay afterwards so yeah I, i've been in, not enjoying the lockdown because obviously my gym is shut so i've got no income coming in from that which is uh that's not good no no it's just like when we opened <laughs> so, so yeah and there's all these um i've got to obviously speak to every person or every company i should say that we've got finance arrangements with and you know leases with and everything else the last two weeks for me people have been sunning themselves in the garden although i've been on instagram doing my workouts with jacob and everything else the majority of my time away from jacob has been spent um negotiating with people rent holidays and um you know <laughs> lease holidays <laughs> holiday holidays yeah <laughs> yeah yeah Fair one. so yeah so so i have been very very busy um and we're going to bed at like 12 1 in the morning most nights so uh so yeah it's uh it's busy but i'm not I'm not dying just yet. So um, well, well, don't, because um, that God, that'd be funny, wouldn't it? And, that'd be, you know, me, that'd be me, tough for me, the podcast. Me, me nearly dying three times, and then you dying. That I, think, so... I don't think I could live with that. No, I, but that I, would I, be so funny. I, I would be saying at your funeral that that's so ironic. You know, <laughs> I, I'd obviously isn't I'd, it ironic I, that Tom yeah. died before isn't me? Isn't it ironic <laughs> that after all the brushes with death I've had, it's Tom that's actually gone? God, yeah, that pussy cat. He couldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that'd be funny. Yeah, um, I'd laugh. I think you should leave your laptop to me and you will, though. <laughs> well, uh, so I can, know, I, I, I can advertise P Team Peace Garb's Body Revolution. <laughs> if that did happen, it would be like Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I'd uh, get down to the devil <laughs> and be like, nah, mate, that ain't <laughs> happening. I want to go back and have another go at that. I'm, yeah, I'm you get, not going to put up get. with that. <laughs> You gave that book a three chances. Yeah, yeah. How come I? How come I don't get three chances? I'm, I'm more like a cat than him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, you know, obviously, it, it, it's clear to everybody who listens to our podcast and whatever that their their general way of doing things has all changed. You know, mm. and I think that's that's one of the biggest things with this now, the current crisis, is it it's affecting everybody. Um. I think when things happen, um, you know, people sympathize with others and whatever, um, but really it doesn't control your life where this, I don't know anybody that hasn't changed their life in some way, shape or form. Even, even for the people that have to continue working, you know, I'm, I'm working, um, I'm on reduced hours, um, but I'm still working because I, I, um, build databases and support my application and things and I work with a lot of Ministry of Defence clients and banks and stuff and they're all still working um, so I, I go to work um, Paul's like but, um, Chloe out of, C, out of 24 <laughs> <laughs> so, so which brings me on to this new phenomena that we were having um, now, it, it, it's slightly, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's irony, but um, it's like a year ago, everybody seemed to slay online coaches, you know? I mean, like, everybody, you know? Um, and now everybody's an online coach, you know? Um, now, obviously, people have to change with the times, and 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 obviously, the current crisis is unprecedented and stuff but um it does make me laugh when i see posts from 
certainly not everybody don't get me wrong if, if if making a living is moving your pt business online then that's brilliant i'm not i'm not taking a piss are you what i'm what i'm find funny is those that are vocally like properly vocally on social media just slammed online coaching as not coaching how can you help someone when it's online and you're not face to face and what have you and are now doing exactly that and promoting like services and packages and everything that and uh, using words like just as good as if you trained in a gym you know due to popular what, demand i'm now online <laughs> yeah 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 you know um and and i i just think that's like you know it, it's just right hopefully those people won't go back to going oh yeah a one-to-one training is much better and whatever one-to-one if you can afford one-to-one training um and you can get a good one-to-one pt because like anything there are bad online coaches you know the guys who do half a diet or have have done a show and been in decent nick but didn't win but someone said can you do me a diet because you look great and that and suddenly two days later they've got a prep coach page on facebook or whatever um you know you've, you've i just find it ironic that it, it's come full circle and everybody's doing that like i said if if you're a you know a genuine good PT and and it, you you basically didn't slay online coaches and whatever yeah and you're you're making your money now from online coaching your clients and stuff because I don't know about you Tom but the way I do things has certainly changed um, and you got to do it all from your from your little clear perspex box that's what you're... yeah <laughs> every meal is a yeah. slice of fava beans with a nice chianti <laughs> yeah i i you know i'm so isolated i've got to um have facetime behind the screen so um <laughs> you know but it, 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 do you not find that funny it's uh, and everybody's got a plan everybody's got a plan everybody's suddenly got a workout and i i share my workouts for bands and stuff on my social media um i don't I don't go right. Here's a specific workout, and it's X amount a month or whatever. Um, but I've seen so many plans suddenly materialize, you know. And the, the biggest know. annoyance for me is that before um, before obviously all this happened, I obviously we do the podcast on Zoom. I coach clients on Zoom. And, uh, and I had an, I have an accountability. I still have an accountability meeting every Friday morning with my little business group and that's on zoom. So I've been using zoom for over a year, maybe 18 months. Yeah. And zoom has now become the, um, a bit slower because of everybody doing zoom workouts and, um, not that I'm slating that, but it's it's like God, you, you found the thing i like to do and now you're doing it and now my thing is now not as good as it used to be yeah 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 and 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 um <laughs> along with zoom you've got um live videos i'm i'm i'm, I'm everyone's doing live videos oh my yeah fucking god and i, I do like, live videos anyway and now everyone else is doing live videos like mate that's my thing don't do my thing yeah but people are doing live videos about what they're eating <laughs> so bored it's like, it's like it's about like, to crack open a monster <laughs> yeah it's like covid19 meal plan live video with stan and then it's him sat at his table or her sat at his table going look what i prefer um, prepared in this current crisis of isolation and whatever i'm like sharon you're eating chicken and rice <laughs> you, you you were eating that before covid19 and you'll eat it after it did, yeah, why weren't you doing a live video two months ago? It's, it's, you know? it's, it's like, um, look, look at my... And, and, and Sharon, get dressed. <laughs> Pajamas at yeah. three o'clock in the afternoon. Or even I worse. I woke up like this. <laughs> or even worse, fully made up with the bra and knickers on. Or, or, or short shorts going, oh yeah, um, I just thought I'd show you how I prep meals. In your underwear, love. Come on. That's a keeper, that know? is. Yeah. Yeah. That's an advert for a husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, I saw, I saw a brilliant one the other day, and I think I shared it in our little group on, on WhatsApp. Oh, it was just, it was the best 
the best home workout stroke soft porn thing I've ever seen. And it was, um, it, it, it was, it was a girl a woman in like the, the shortest hot pants and a nice little crop top and, and fair play to her. She looked hot, but she was doing like this sort of dumbbelly type workout, home ab workout. Dumbbelly type. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Some sort of <laughs> kettle belly thing. And, um, <laughs> And what, what, what she was doing was, and, and obviously I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to picture this for radio, but if you can imagine, uh, if, if you can imagine you lay on your back with your legs in the air, wide open, and then she was holding the dumbbell and doing sit-ups and pushing the dumbbell through her legs. And it just reminded me of something I saw in Thailand with ping pong balls. <laughs> <laughs> i've seen the same show um <laughs> it um it it, it, it it was it was so funny but she was but she was deadly serious it, it's obviously an exercise but i've never seen that exercise done before but yeah i mean i, I just i was just mesmerized I, I watched it for at least two minutes <laughs> um but I, I don't know if i don't know if you've <laughs> i shouldn't take the piss because obviously people are trying to develop content and they're trying to put stuff out there and they're trying to run their businesses whatever online but i just think if you want to be maybe taken seriously as a pt having um having the shortest short shorts on um doing your workouts is probably not going to establish you as a well, let, you know credible uh, all, PT. All, all joking aside and stuff and it it's not that's not a video to promote your video uh, to, to promote your business that's a video it's only fans <laughs> yeah, it, and, and here's the thing: who needs only fans now? Because Pornhub's free, apparently. I don't know. Someone told me. <laughs> apparently, premium. Um, you can just sign up in two minutes. Uh, like my mate told me something. I think about that. Asking for a friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but you, you know, if you're going to do videos like that, you're not promoting your business. You're promoting your followers as in to get more followers, you know, cause you know, <laughs> but it worked cause I was following her. <laughs> this is it. It's like, it's like you look at the, you look at the people on the Instagram that have got the most followers and genuinely, genuinely, not all genuine, uh, genuinely it, most of their pictures be male or female are semi naked. They're not content pictures like um, this is my workout or this is my diet or this is how you, you deal with calor cal I can't speak today, calories or whatever. It's not proper content. It's basically pictures of um, this is how I look in this bikini. This is how I look in this bikini. And this is how I look without a bikini, but with a strategically placed towel. You know, it... it, it, it <laughs> And obviously, and we're just, not saying that that's bad. <laughs> I, well, don't want, I don't know how I'm to not, follow that sentence. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm, listen, um, I'm not saying that it, it's bad because that's Instagram all over. That's social media all over. What I'm saying is now those people, yeah, those Instagram people, are in in air quotes influencers, and and they're now like promoting their their like workouts and stuff that they never did before and it's like right okay um and you're selling that workout for 9.99 or 20 pound you know and, and it's sort of like you weren't before that that you weren't doing that but now you've got a captive audience because everybody stays in no gyms are open so you know people in general people are stupid and they will look at someone doing a workout and go, that's how they got looking like that. So Brenda from Bingo, she's going to do that resistance band workout, but she's going to continue eating like she's been eating because no one told her to put down the fucking donuts. Uh, I, I, saw, I saw a meme. It was brilliant. It was the one, the one box was... Chris Hemsworth is now doing free online workouts. And the, <laughs> and, and the <laughs> you see that, haven't you? And the other window was the girl from, uh, is it Pitch Perfect? The fat girl, I can't remember. What, yeah. 
you know, you, you know who I mean if I say the fat girl, the one who's really funny, her. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. sat eating Pop Tarts or whatever, and it says above it, me watching Chris Hemsworth's. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah, you know, it, 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 and it, it just is a little bit um, frustrating. Like I said, everybody's coming out with workouts and home workouts, and I don't know how many different ways you can do a press up you know other than the ways that everybody's been showing and the the same problems are coming now with home workouts that were with the videos of gym workouts and that's you're not doing the fucking exercise properly the the I'll amount of, go on go on the, the amount of people i've said i've seen going yeah i'm doing press ups or um, i'm doing 50 press ups in a minute or whatever and they're not doing a press up. They're like doing a mini fucking dip, or or their 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 stomach is touching the floor all the time, you know. And and or they're moving a minuscule amount. I'm like, do a press up, you know. Well, and it, <laughs> do you know? Do you know what? Do you know what? Also, this this virus thing has um, has, has developed a massive lack of is gym fail videos. Yes. yes. There's a, some serious lacking of gym fail videos going around now because obviously people ain't going to film themselves at home doing gym fail workouts unless they're staging it for you've been framed or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and there's no one in the corner like um, taking a um, a video of them doing something that they think is completely. Yeah. Look at this dickhead! <laughs> Look at this yeah. dickhead! <laughs> <working from home. laughs> Look at him, stupid! Oh yeah, that's me. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> so um what el- what else are we um talking about tonight? Um have we done oh we we were going to talk about clap for everybody. Yes. That's not with the antibiotics. No, no, it's not that clap as you're most familiar with. Um mm. it's yeah, you've been in the um, navy, you're the one who's more familiar with that sort of shenanigan, thank you very much. Put every port and, and all. You don't get clap in the navy. <laughs> um anyway moving on <laughs> you get saluted in the navy um so that's something else is that like a code yeah word? i'm never i'm never gonna tell you what that is <laughs> um so so all serious note now um both me and tom we was discussing this off air and um we're both really appreciative of not only the nhs but all the people that have stepped up and are, are doing the frontline stuff supermarkets posties you know, everybody who's keeping the economy running as well as the NHS. Now, I've got um, a personal pride with the NHS because, as we joked about earlier, I, you know, I've, I've nearly died three times and they've saved me and, and what have you. Now, um, and I totally get and I totally agree with the um, with the reason for the clap for the NHS on an eight o'clock at eight o'clock on a Thursday night. Totally get it. I think it's a brilliant thing. You know, I don't think that you should be berated if you don't do it, but it is a brilliant thing. It's great to see and, and what have you. What I have a slight issue with is now all the other claps for that are coming out. Um, our friend um, Aaron Hudson made a post today um, about this. And he's bang on the money. It, it's like it started with the NHS, and that's great. And, that, and, and I don't think there's anybody that would disagree with especially the NHS, you know, actually actively working in hospital, in ICU, putting their lives at risk every day and working really long hours in really bad conditions. You know, seeing people that ill and stuff is not nice. Um, however... Apparently on Tuesday night, Tuesday just gone, we, we're, we're recording this on the Thursday. Um, on, on the Tuesday just gone, uh, Boris Johnson, I think, went into, I think it was Tuesday was the day after he went into ICU. Well, it there was the weekend, a, and then it was Tuesday was in ICU. No, he went into, yeah, he went into, he went into hospital on, um, he went into hospital on Friday, I think it was. And then on um, Sunday night or Monday night, about eight o'clock, he got moved to ICU. And so on Tuesday, there was a thing going about tonight, eight o'clock, clap for Boris. 
And I'm like, you know, why? You know, seriously, why? Why not clap for Brenda? Who you said Brenda already? Well, Brenda's sister. Who's also Badger. Brenda? Yeah, Brenda Junior. Um, <laughs> but why not? You know, why not clap for that person? Or why not clap for Steve from you know who's just had a um, transplant or has just had chemotherapy or whatever that's in ICU and whatever. I don't, you know. You know, Boris is the PM, and I, I get the concern about it, and I actually like him, and I think he's the best PM we've had for a long time, especially in this um, crisis. But I'm like, why? Why clap? Because he's in hospital. You know, you clap for the nurses and the frontline staff and the key workers because they're putting their lives in danger to keep us healthy and alive and fed and, you know, and whatever you but why Boris? You know, I don't get that that understanding. And now, I saw today we've got clap for kids. So apparently, this Sunday, clap for kids. This, that sounds so wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. So now we've got on this Sunday, so um, Easter Sunday, where you're going to give them chocolate anyway. Um, there is a campaign for clap the clap for kids because they've handled this really well. That that person hasn't hasn't lived in my house, you know. You know, <laughs> you know, three boys under the age of thirteen. You know, is you know, they've been great, but I'm sure they're not like, you know, they haven't been sat down in a row doing schoolwork for eight hours a day, and and then you know they've been boys. But my point is. But kids lead by example. If 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 you're around if you're around your kids and not worried about it in like that you show them, they'll not be worried about it. You know? But now we're clapping for them. You know? I, 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 do you see what I mean? I d I don't I don't I'm, disagree um, with you know. I I'm I'm quite worried about the association by giving them chocolates and then clapping. You know, so, so, so should we, should we then always clap them when they have chocolate, or would they expect to be always clapped? Or yeah. if they get clapped, do they immediately get chocolate after that? He's setting yeah. a dangerous precedent there. You know, they're the ones, if they're on the, the 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 school play or whatever, and you clap them, they come off because where's my chocolate, mate? You just clap me. Where's my chocolate? Yeah. Oh no, exactly. don't get, oh yeah, but back in the time, yeah, we we chocolate. Yeah. Last Sunday you clapped, and is that every Sunday? Do we do we clap them every Sunday? Do we clap Boris just while he's in hospital, or every Tuesday night, or what? what yeah, you know? Do, do you know, I, I do. Yeah, obviously facetiousness aside, I, 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 I don't. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't get that. You know, it's. Um, I, I, I get the the NHS thing on a Thursday because because as the weeks go on, and obviously you know, there's tragic about. So the nurses that have died and everything else doing their job and supporting it and all that is very you know serious and admirable and yeah and you know i do agree with the with the thursday night clapping you know that's uh, that's something that shows solidarity of the nation mm. but you dilute that too much when you start saying oh well what you know we we'll have to have a clap every night so everyone comes out every night and starts clapping and then the and then the the, the reason you started doing it to show solidarity to the nhs and thank you for the work you're doing it gets diluted and then all yeah, of a no, sudden no, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not as special. Yeah. That, and that's what I mean. It's not that I'm against clapping for Boris or against, you know, um, being grateful that, you know, kids are doing well or anything. I just think it's beginning to, like you said, it, it removes the actual reason for starting it in the first place. That's like, it's, it's a snowflake thing. It, it's <laughs> like, well, it is. It's like, oh, you're clapping for them, but I, I still got to work. Why aren't you clapping for me? You know, and everyone and gets a like, medal. I was just about to say, it's like everybody gets a Sorry. trophy. Should we rewind? No, no, no. Seriously. <laughs> okay, what is it like, Paul? <laughs> it's like everybody gets a trophy. Oh, I was there just about no, to say that. I was just about to say <laughs> There are no winners. There are no losers. And, you know, it, 
I'm sure people are listening to this podcast when it goes out and go, oh, no, that's the wrong attitude to have, Paul, blah, blah, blah. You know, but you know, why aren't, I get the, 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 the reason for it, I totally get and agree with it. Although I do actually think that everybody should be clapping year round, no matter of a crisis for the NHS and, and in general, to be fair. Um, when before this crisis, all I heard from people was complaining because their, their back um, physio appointment was like three months and, and whatever. Yeah. But um, I think everybody should be thankful of the NHS, no matter when that is. But like you said, it loses the effect of it when you dilute it to such a degree. You know? Yeah, and, and that's, that's the thing, isn't it? Um, if it becomes every week as well, it, it, if it's every week, it's, it, it's diluted as well because it's like, oh, it's, well, it, it starts to become a routine, not a... Does, does that make sense? You know, it, should be... it, 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 it does make sense, and I understand where you're coming from, but I do think that the NHS one, on a, on a Thursday night at 8 o'clock, I think during this crisis, I, I think that every Thursday night should be done. Um, what be, I want to know because is... They, con ton, they, they continue, um, but I just think that no else should be done. That clap is for the NHS to show them how grateful we are um, you know, how they're dealing with things now and obviously frontline and, and, and uh, delivery drivers and truck drivers and posties and, you know, and, and people like that. There's no exemption to it. But I think by adding on people to that, like, process is, is just stupid. It's like going, right, let's have a clap on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock for everybody who does podcasts and because we entertain you during yes, this you are crisis this time. Yeah. Lean, out of, lean out of your car window and just give us a clap. Yeah. yeah. Oh, try not to crash your car though at the same time. But then take yourself to the police station because you're out in your fucking car and you should be at home. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're on your way to essential work. Yeah, fair one. At the beach. And a, a nurse is listening to this going, oh, you want to fucking clap as well now, do you? <laughs> So, um, yeah. So, anyway, that's my rant. What, with this. I, what I want to know is, why is it, why is it Thursday, 8 o'clock? Is that when Holby City is normally on? <laughs> no, that's Tuesday. I know that because Jen watches it. Ah, it, right. it, it. I must admit, I did, me and Jen, uh, me and my wife did speak about this because it's 8 o'clock and kids are involved. And, and down our street, it's not, our street's not a busy place. Um, but, it, it was quite loud and stuff. And, you know, my two youngest boys are in bed. You know, wouldn't it have been made sense to do it like six o'clock? Or well, maybe people have got like, loads to do at six o'clock. What, like, yeah, going out <laughs> to a la front room for a beer or something. <laughs> oh, okay, right, let's, uh, let's move on then. So we've done clap for everyone. We've done... We've done Which everyone's sounds online. wrong. <laughs> no, no discrimination. Clap for yeah. everyone. Um, we've done everyone's an online coach. Yeah, they are now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, we we've done home workouts a little bit. Yeah, we did done them that. a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I think I talked about the webinar, so that's fine. Right. And um, yeah, because we do actually have a list of stuff that we do, and we yeah. we tick through it as we go. It's not it's not just created on the spot. Although it might look as though yeah, we are. I know, I know. It's just it's creating. Sound, it's certainly it certainly sounds like that. Um, um, oh, and, we did the, oh, and we did the live videos, which are really getting on my nuts. <laughs> I've got a live video coming tomorrow. Yeah but, yeah, but you've always done live videos. And there's other people that have always done live videos and they continue to do them. And that's fine. But it's like when I'm, if I'm looking at my Instagram on, on my phone, I get a banner coming down from the top going, so-and-so is doing a live video, follow it now. So-and-so is doing a live video, follow it now. And They'll rack along the top, don't they? It's yeah, like, and, then, like 10 and deep. then I'll press it, and it is. It's, it's whoever in the garden with a pair of bands going, you know, yeah, you can use them for this and use them for that and whatever. And I'm just like, do you know what? Everybody knows that now. Everybody, <laughs> everybody knows if you put, one end of it in one hand and go round your back and put the other end in the other hand and you do a press up 
you'll have more resistance than from just your body weight. You know, it, it's like you don't have to do a live video unless you're doing it for your coaching group. As in, you have a coaching group that you do a daily workout for and they pay for that or your Joe Wicks. Do you know what's interesting is that Joe Wicks's PE thing in the first week was like obviously really busy. As I understand now, it's it's um, it's that the, the viewing figures have dropped off massively, and and there was a lot of people, a lot of online coaches saying, "Oh, he's taken all my business away from me and everything else," and and it just goes to show that it's not it's not the it's not the online workout which is the thing that's that people really want or they're interested in. It in order to you know keep going with it if you're a good coach and you and you are talking to your clients, getting them through with the accountability, with the um, nutrition side of things and how to be productive at home and you know, everything basically I talked about in my home workout webinar. So available on replay. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're doing all that sort of stuff, um, you, you, that's what coaching is, you know, you, cause you can, you can download, you know, it's, let's say all this is over, go back to the, going back to the, the gym or you can download workouts from, bodybuilding.com from youtube whatever you can download those things to do in the gym but yet people still go and get uh, a coach to train them you know because yeah. it's that specialization it's that it's it's working with that person which is what you're paying for it's not you, you can do a bicep curl you can do a presser it, that, that and i think that's what some coaches are sort of getting a bit confused about it's the product they're giving to their the, the service they're giving to their clients um and i think maybe the ones who are worrying about it are people who and maybe a bit shallow in that respect, but anyway. Um, well, yeah, no, I, I no, I agree. I, you know, I retained um, all my clients. I don't have a huge group of clients, um, you know, at the moment because I've only just started back with it. But um, I've got some really good clients, um, and um, I've done what a lot of people have done is um, recognised it's a hard time financially for everybody, so um, move things on that front, um, but. And I've, I've, I have a, a, a specific tool um, that I use to create workouts, as in I create the workouts in my head, obviously from my coaching knowledge and you know, time and stuff. But I have a tool that can put them then visually mm. and you can look at it on your mobile phone and whatever. Yeah. And it, it's accountability because you confirm you've done the workout and, and, and any questions and you track your weights and stuff like that. It's a good tool. But I've converted all their workouts that they would um, perform in the gym onto dumbbell. Oh, well, actually, I, I've what I've done is is had them all show me via pictures or tell me what they're using in their home workout. So what they've got available. And then I've used my tool to then give them a proper workout that they can follow. Not, yeah, just do some band stuff and you'll be fine. And I've moved things around with um, diet. I've just, I've just created a Google sheet where um, not only do I give them a list of foods and whatever, but now I, I, I've enabled them to actually put them into meals from drop downs and stuff so they can structure the day better. So where before they would have the structure where they get up, they have breakfast, they go to work, they do this, you know, the break times, they would have a snack and, you know, it's a much more structured day. Well, they're all at home now, and it's sort of like, yeah, I went and I, you know, I, I forgot about this and whatever. Yeah. Well, this new thing allows them to allot that so they can um, do it for the day. Um, but the the problem, like you said, with coaches is those that didn't like maybe had too many um, clients or just didn't support them enough and whatever. They're the ones that are finding it hard to retain them now because now they've got to try and do something that they're not used to doing. And it then comes out in spades that they, they're not used to doing it, you know? Um, oh, how are you doing? Um, yeah, I've got a problem with, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do your workout. Do you see what I mean? It's, mm. um, I've just found that and I had some feedback from people. So, um, but yeah, it's, um, it's a tough old time. So. yeah and it's and obviously everyone's struggling a little bit so we won't make too much fun of people who are um who, who are struggling with business and everything else um okay i think the last um thing we had was uh, a contest prep in quarantine 
Oh, right. Who did I see on Facebook? I, I listened to him quite often. Um, and my, our good friends, um, Aaron and Susie Souster, tagged me. He actually tagged me. Who else did he tag? He didn't tag you for some reason, but um, it's a guy called Jeff Wright. Have you ever watched any of his stuff? He's the guy, I'm going to play it now so you'll hear it, so you'll hear it on the podcast. And as soon as you hear him, you'll know who I mean. Oh, All right. God. Buddy, we're making another video. You ready? I want to make this one about bodybuilding and competing in your first show. Right? It's so exciting, right? Have you, have you ever heard of him? Uh, do you know what? I have heard that, I have heard that guy um, before, and, and it's, um, I don't know, he, I suppose some of his stuff is quite funny, but yeah, it's. Uh, um... well, I agree. I, I I don't follow him or whatever, but um, I listened to this because I got tagged in it, and he's bang on the money, man. He's really bang on. I'll send you the link to it. Yeah, but he's bang on the money, and he's talking about a, um, someone new to compete in and how they go mental on social media, you know, from the same picture every week in the same pose, no matter progress or not, and all the hashtags and stuff like that. And um, this is what we were talking about, about, well, we call it prep in quarantine, but it's sort of, it's sort of being a bodybuilder in quarantine. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, see, obviously when, when this lockdown thing was, was announced, there was still, the uh, I know the two bros pro whatever stupid name that thing is they 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 were still saying they're going to put a show on in June or whatever yeah. and they yeah. and they wouldn't refund people's money and all that sort of stuff all these horror stories which is actually not surprising for bodybuilding shows we all know what majority of the promoters are like yeah um, the um, yeah and they were they were like yeah we're still doing the we're still doing the show in June and so people were still trying to prep for for this show. But how can you possibly prep for a show when you haven't got a commercial gym? When you, for, you know, for the sake for about ten days, you couldn't really get the food you wanted from uh, from the supermarket. You obviously can't do your cardio to the, to the extent that you should be doing it. There's just no way you're going to be able to prep for a bodybuilding show at home when you're in quarantine. No, absolutely no way. And even if you did do it, you'd be potentially just looking the, your worst shape of your life because you weren't able to, you know get a decent workout you know what why don't why didn't these these shows just say you know what we accept it's not going to be because because let's say even if lockdown finished let's say in for argument's sake three weeks which would be what the 21st 22nd of april which it won't yeah. you know there's yeah. no, you know everyone's oh everyone's thinking it's going to be stopped on monday not a chance you know not a hey. chance that's going to happen they actually said on the news today when they were speaking to the guy in charge of COVID-19 for WHO, which is the World Health Authority, not the band. Um, he, he said, they asked him as journalists do, can you give us a date? And obviously he's like, no, I can't. Um, and they said, could you, like, would you say as long as it's been going on now? So basically three weeks. And he's like, oh, yeah, easily. So, yeah. you know, it, it, they do a review. Because um, something else I learned today is the lockdown is in law. So that next week on the Monday, um, they have to, or before then, obviously, they have to discuss it properly mm. and then tell the public what's happening. They have to do that no matter what. That was part of the bill, in, wasn't it? Yeah, because it's in law. Mm. Um, and it's not going to happen like that. And I was hearing as well today, it's not going to be right from tonight, at 8 PM, the lockdown's finished. It's going to be like, right. These shops can open and, you know, it, it's, yeah, it, it, it always, um, I mean, I, I do a fair amount of reading around it. I, not so much the tin hat 5g stuff, but, um, Ooh, well done. Oh, oh, well done. let's discuss that in a minute. But the, yeah. um, yeah, so, so so I do a reading of you know medical journals or whatever else, and and um, and and all all that is pointing to because it's got to be 
if you've got if you've got it but you're not symptomatic there's potentially two weeks where you're infectious but you're not yeah you know but you don't even know it and if you develop it then you've got another two to three weeks before potentially even you you develop it you either go really bad go on a respirator and then you've got a 50 50 chance of dying or you get it light symptoms and then you're out of it but then all of that can take up to about three to four weeks anyway yeah so, so even if someone was infected on the day the first day of the lockdown which is like the 20th of march something like that yeah. they would only just be coming out in like a week's time or something which is past yeah. three-week review so it's not it's not viable to do it in on monday there's no there's no way that's going to happen it's going to be another three weeks at least but then even after that we've still got you know we don't we don't know what's going to happen you know it's probably going to slow down but we don't know um you know so it's it's it, it's going to be another probably six to nine weeks before the lockdown as we know it is lifted um and 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 you know a lot i'm in this this group with independent gym owners and a lot of those guys you know talking about oh it'll be it'll be over in may or whatever it, it won't there's no I, all the all the discussions i've had with my accountant my solicitor all, all that stuff in terms of preparation for coming back to work we're all we're all talking about august you know really well, before we're, we're allowed to open again they're they're saying that um wuhan who has now ended the lockdown yeah um wuhan was in lockdown for 76 days yeah and they're saying if we were in lockdown for the same amount of time yeah judging that we've got double the death rate than china um from the day we went into lockdown we wouldn't come out of it until june the 7th yeah and and, and even then even then coming out of it gyms will not be able to open restaurants will not be able to open cinemas uh places of worship you know despite what people are going on about oh it's my right to worship whatever doesn't override the rule of law in the in the uk <clears throat> you know that those places of mass congregation of people they will not be allowed to open and even when gyms are allowed to open i highly anticipate we'll get a directive that says you are only allowed a certain amount of people in your venue for a certain amount of square foot that you've got and you have to show that you're regulating that now that's not so much of an issue for me because my software my gym software allows people to book to come in at certain times so i could say like a two-hour window open up 30 spaces and say well you have to book on to, to to be able to come to the gym if you turn up and your name's not on the list you know <laughs> it's on the door like, like, like in the old days you know the if you turn up and you haven't booked then you, and, and there's no spaces and you can't come in you, you, yeah. you've got to, and, there, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it will be like for places like cinemas you would have to have booked your tickets online and there would only be a certain amount of screens to be shown if you go into a restaurant, you would have to have booked online before you go there or, or phoned up and booked. And the restaurant will have to have two meter spacing tables. All these things will be enforced probably through till November, December, you know, because obviously winter is going to be obviously, you know, well, the, to any virus. Well, <clears throat> what they're saying now is obviously the reason for the lockdown is to prevent the peak. Um, you know, the, the peak that would basically um just flatten the nhs hmm. and then they they they're going to work it so there's like peaks and troughs under the capacity of the ventilators hmm. so um it it's sort of releasing some things letting people mingle and stuff in a controlled way then more people are going to get it obviously because that's what's going to happen um then they'll either have no symptoms or they'll have mild symptoms so the nhs won't be bothered sort of thing there'll be a slight peak in um severe cases and it'll just continue like that because the, the thing is as well i think a lot of people think covid19 is just going to go as in right we've got it now and it'll be gone by august september and it'll be fine and like it's here it's like the flu it's you know it's I, I must point out it's worse than the flu, so no one actually mm. contact me and say that I'm being ridiculous because it's not it's worse than the flu or whatever. But um, you know, and and that sort of thing to someone like me is is so when's my lockdown finished? You know? 
essentially my lockdown can't finish until until I um, get the vaccine. Yeah, and and that, and that's obviously the, for for a lot of people who have uh, immune system problems. That's that's a real issue. Um, mm. So you know, when are you going to be allowed to go back to the gym? And also, they were talking about this uh, if you've got the antibodies thing, and about um, you know this this is this isn't a funny reference, although it does you know. But in Germany, they were talking about having like bands around your arm or whatever if you if you'd had it in your antibodies so you couldn't catch it again yeah that just sort of feels like sort of a 1945 thing doesn't it you know yeah where you've got a two-tier society not not that it's germany but it's that it's that thing where where people would be like well i i can go out because i've got a band so i'm a higher level of citizen and until people have got the have got the band they're not allowed out so it'd be like you know, like how how parents used to have measles parties where they bring yeah, all their yeah. kids around. It'd be like, be like, I've got it. Well, I'm coming around your house right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah no, kick no, in no. the I, door, I, just hug your mate until you get it. Yeah, I I, I agree. It, it, it's um, they're talking about people who have a positive antibody test mm. being able to come out of lockdown first um, because they, you know, um, but they're not certain if they can still pass it on. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they've got to do that testing and the antibody test will be a game changer because that means that NHS staff can go back to work, you know? Mm. Um, so, but you know, it, 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 logistically it's a fucking nightmare, you know, there, it's going to get to a point where the economic, um, risk and also the mental risk becomes more than the actual health risk from catching the virus itself. Because there's so many people who are going to be out of money, losing money, not able to support their family at home with abusive partners at home. And they've got certain conditions which heighten when they're, when they're on lockdown. Those people will start to you know, commit suicide, get beaten up, get all these other health things associated with being in lockdown. And also, you know, from not having any money as well. So all these problems that's the other thing you've got to outweigh is that okay if we're trying to preserve as much life as possible where does it where does it start start with preserving as much life as possible from people dying from COVID-19 and preserving as much life as possible from people who are suffering and have a really low quality of life or commit suicide or so low quality of life they die yeah I I, I agree where's that comparison you know so that that's And that's a tough decision to make, isn't it? Well, without a doubt, and I agree um, that I, I I was saying to a friend the other day that um, on the phone, it, yeah, the, the the economy is is sort of you know hanging on in there because of of the the process and and stuff that have been put in place. Plus, the you know the government's getting a lot of jip for not looking after this element in society or this element in society and whatever. And um, the um, MP for the MP who's doing it, I've forgotten his name now, Sunak, is it? Um, Richard Sunak. Yeah. He's, um, he actually admitted the other day he's not going to be able to save everybody, you know, you which can't, you can't. Can. Yeah, you can. So, but I think their package that they put together is, is brilliant. Yeah, some people have fallen through the cracks and I, I feel really good for them, but um, the majority of people aren't. And in, in something like this, it's the, the the saving the majority is better than saving no one. Um, and I, I think it the, the, it will come to a time where it's like right, if we want to have an economy after this, if we want, you know, we put all this in place, but if we want to be able to have those companies trading afterwards and stuff like that, we're gonna have to do something that eases things down you know here's the other thing is that um i was reading an an economic discussion and um america is adamant that it won't well trump is and and obviously his cabinet whatever adamant they want to get things back working as soon as possible because if china gets a handle on this quicker and starts producing they can overtake some of the world's biggest economies because they're <laughs> producing and everyone else is locked down. <clears throat> so, so there's the other sort of political, socioeconomic 
consideration is that we is a lot of these governments are worried about the um say the the the, the 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 countries that had it first coming out of it first and then getting the upper hand on manufacturing and exporting and stuff like that so there is a real um that that is the other side of the coin isn't it it's like would do you want to allow somewhere like china to become a, a dominant superpower economically and i don't profess to be you know economically minded in terms of knowing all the ins and outs but there's there's the risk that people are talking about and of course obviously you know you can't weigh up a human life against that sort of thing but the the detriment to human life long way down the line is going to be if china does get uh, get on on uh, on top of its um coronavirus faster than the us the uk europe everything else they could become the dominant exporter and manufacturer of certain things <clears throat> which would um which would shift the balance of economic power. No, I agree. I and agree. Then, and then there's a conspiracy theory on top of that, which I don't normally entertain, but it's like Trump's looking for a war with China and that's how he's going to do it. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Cause again, that's a conspiracy theory then, but it's like, you know, China owes us all this money for the virus it put out. We want all these reparations. China says, no, right. We're going to war. And then that's, yeah. that's, that's a potential eight, nine months down the line. Mm. So that was, that was an uplifting discussion, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It makes you think that's very different to our normal podcast. But, <laughs> but then the thing is, it's, it's, you know, um, we, we do podcasts about the current climate and, um, what's currently happening and, and obviously then, um, discussions of, um and stuff and for those listening me and tom did discuss this podcast and whatever we thought it was important to get one out um but it is going to be ruled by covid19 um and and you know how it how it affects us all you know we we joke and we do joke you know on the on the podcast about you know all these online trainers now and you know these people moaning about this and whatever you like that but it's just hopefully everybody who listens to us listens to us for the same reason. Um, and that's because, you know, we, we, we do, we do pass some knowledge over and, and obviously with our experience and stuff like that. And, but also it, it's, it's lighthearted banter, you know, um, you know, we, but you can't have lighthearted banter totally about a subject like this, you know, um, sure. the one, <laughs> I do um the one thing that is quite funny is the amount of um like circular in like Facebook things that go around at the moment. Like I participated on I've just participated in one and that was that if you are a competitor or ex competitor, just put a picture up, no description, just of you sort of thing. Um and then there's another one of, you know, um asking you four four things about yourself so what you know that stuff you... is all data mining stuff there, yeah, there, was, yeah. there was one the other day and it was like oh fill in this fun quiz and then share it with all your friends and it was like what's your date what what's your birth month what's your star star sign? what's your favorite color what's your mother's maiden name and all these people are doing it online i'm like are you a fucking moron yeah just, no 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 I, yeah all your, all your personal data which people can use it to to hack your um hacky passwords and stuff like that yeah yeah what's your database uh data god i work hard too hard what's your date of birth fully yeah. you know i'm like right okay you know and and no i get that i you know that's why i never uh, fill them in um mm. but um and it's the same with um where have you been or what have you done in your life and you you know you you tick it all off and or even to the degree of the um these foods are what i can't stand you tell me what you can't stand you know and it and it's data mining for targeting adverts at you you know yeah. if you say you can't stand curries but you love donuts don't be surprised when you get a load of crispy creme adverts smashed at you, you I, I, I wouldn't i wouldn't object to that no no, no fair one that's <laughs> that's a fair do but okay uh, I think that's I think that's about an hour, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, it is. Um, let me just um, end with that. We're going to do another one in the next week or so. 
we month promise. Or so. Yeah, month. <laughs> um, um, but we're going to have a special guest. We don't know who yet. Um, um, but we'll have a special guest, and it will be more on um, nutrition and training and um, everything like that. Um, you know, so uh, I look forward to doing that one. But for now, uh, sponsors. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 was that our sponsors? Or did yeah. You... I, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry. Do you want me to do them again? Yeah. Okay. Go on. Okay. Word from our sponsors. Okay. Good. Right. Brilliant. Um, yeah. So, what's um, what's your Instagram and social media? Ah, post- yes. Um, and with my Instagram, I just want to um get it out there. A lot of people are trying to follow me on my P Scarb one, um, which is now um private because i share pictures of my kids and all that sort of stuff on um but if you want to follow me um use um my instagram account for team p scarb so it's just that no spaces team p scarb um all lowercase um just use that give us a follow um i put up quite a bit of content not as much as obviously tom um but he's got loads of times on his hands because his gym shut um <laughs> oh, <geez. so> <laughs> Uh, I'll go out so, for a walk later. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, some fresh air. Yeah, there's uh, plenty of content in there and uh, and what have you. Um, so it's Team P Scarb. Um, I um, I'm Team P Scarb on on Facebook as well, and P Scarb One and One on Twitter. And mine is um, Tom Blackman underscore Nutrition on Instagram. I am on Twitter, but I don't go on it very much. Um, Facebook is BKM Nutrition and the website is bkmnutrition.com. And on that site, you can, you can get the uh, recipes that I do, the um, cal- calorie calculator, the webinars, absolutely tons of free content to help you with your diet and nutrition. Um, someone the other day accused me of just being, I was on one, it was one of my Facebook adverts. And the guy was like, he didn't even watch the video, obviously, because he didn't realize, he didn't know anything about the video that when he made his comment. He was like, oh, yeah, and just pay you all the money, I suppose, by clicking your link. I was like, oh, oh like, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And I was like, well, actually, mate, if you click the link, it takes you to the other three videos that support this one video, and you can get a, you can get a free PDF download that helps you. And actually, I won't try and sell you anything at that site. It's, you know, just to give you some free stuff and then, yeah, okay, you'll be on my email list and I'll email you free recipes every, every week and some free webinars and some other video stuff and occasionally might tell you about my coaching program. But yeah, that's fine. You know, just, just slag me off. And it was like nine o'clock on a Sunday night. All these dickheads always come out the woodwork nine o'clock on a Sunday. If I get a notification on my phone, it's like blah, blah, blah has commented on your BKM nutrition post. I just thought that's a dickhead. I just know it's a dickhead. That's going to comment it because there's only dickheads that comment at that time. <laughs> it's only dickheads that comment. Yeah, because they, um, they generally live on their own. No one likes them. They've got no friends, so they just sit on Facebook and when they get angry at, a, at, a, at something that pops up in their feed, and so like, well, maybe you should take notice of it because maybe people would like you and you'd look better. And, and okay, well, 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 I'd yeah. rant on about it. Um, yeah, so that's that's my social media stuff. Um, uh, I think that's that's it for today, isn't it? It is, mate. It is. Um, yeah. So uh, we'll see you when we come back. Yeah. So hopefully that'll be a few weeks. <laughs> might be a month. Uh, might we're, be talking we're gonna to Paul. We're going to have a guest as well. Um, not sure who yet, but we're going to have a guest. Um, and, then Jinx said um, that will never happen. <laughs> Try to get guests on here before, and then like people would never turn up. Yeah, we're not. We're not. We're not in flavour now, are we? So. Uh, um, everybody's doing the podcast these days. So. You need to get on Instagram and get your ass out. All right, and then we'll get some more people coming on to the podcast and some poor people follow. Just get your ass out, Paul. Go on, take one for the team. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was in the Navy, so I've already done that. <laughs> okay. Let's leave it there. Then. Yeah. Okay. Okay, stay safe, everybody, and we'll see, speak, listen, whatever, to you next time. Yeah, take care, everybody. Bye now. UK bodybuilding is in crisis. With growing numbers of competitors opting for more accessible fitness-based competitions, 
dealing with controversy and discourse within the established federations in the UK, traditional bodybuilding is at risk of being squeezed out. But after three years away from the sport, two veterans of the UK bodybuilding scene are out to prove they'll do whatever it takes to win a British title. I don't train to lose, and Paul doesn't train to lose. I would like it to brothers, actually. It has been said that we look like brothers. I personally don't see it because I'm much better looking and taller than him. We're quite similar, um, except that he's only like 40 years older than me. For real men, use this. That's my applause. As Tom and Paul prepare for their return to bodybuilding, we find out what happens when best friends become rival competitors on the same stage. You know, I've taken gear for, for years, and but I've never beaten up my girlfriends. A testosterone product, a product called Trembolone, Mastron. Just Google pro steroid cycles. That advice is normally given by idiot. Four grams of test prop a week. What a fucking joke. I'm going to have to go team farm at this point, but I don't tell him that. <coughs> There's always competition, isn't there? But that makes you want to be better. He's judging, you can see he's still got the passion for it, and he still wants to be up there. He's starting to get grumpy when he's dying. I have more titles than Bob. This is not following a diet. This is not getting fit. This is not drugs doing the work. This is whatever it takes. This is prep.